Hello everyone, welcome back to Heart Breathings. Today is part four of my series on how to edit your novel, and we're gonna be talking about some of my favorite books on editing. So yeah, you've made it to what will be the shortest video, hopefully, of this entire series. So far, we've talked about how to self-edit your novel, what are the different types of editors? We've talked about questions, answering questions about beta readers and everything there. So now let's talk about some of the best books on editing. Just like books on plotting, there is just a huge pile of books on how to edit your novel. Um, and you don't want to skip the books on plotting and craft because really, you'll need less editing and you'll understand story structure and how to write dialogue and all of that so much better if you study the just the regular craft books anyway. So if you go back to my guide on how to plot your novel, you'll see some of my favorite books on plotting and craft and that sort of thing, and the list goes on. But let's talk specifically about books that I like when I'm getting into the editing process and books that helped me to edit my own books better. So one of my favorites that I still have in hard copy here is self-editing for fiction writers. And this is kind of a standard. I'm not sure when this came out, but it's been more than a decade ago. This is by Rennie Brown and Dave King. I have the second edition. I'm not sure if there's been a new edition published, but I've had this one for a long time. This book is just one of those that's really great for taking an editor's perspective and helping you to self-edit. So this is some of that copy edit line edit type stuff that you'll get. You get chapters on characterization, exposition, point of view, inner monologue, um, voice, setting, that sort of thing. Plus it talks about how to cut your passages down and it gives you some very specific examples of how to take a certain passage and make it better. So they'll give you some examples and you can kind of see how an editor would work through some examples and some sample writing. So I found that very helpful as a beginning book on editing. So if you're looking for something that's kind of one of the staples, I would say definitely pick up self editing for fiction writers. Another book, and I'm sorry, I don't actually have all of these to just hold up and show you because as some of you know, I am in the middle of packing because we are moving to a new house in just a couple of weeks. So a lot of my books have already been packed up, but you can find these very easily online and I will have links to the books down below as well as there are links and a list of these books in my editing guide. If you have not downloaded the free editing guide workbook that I put together for you guys that will go with this whole series. You can get that over on my website at heartbreathings.com slash how to edit your novel. I'll have the link for you down below, or you can go to heartbreathings.com slash blog or today's blog post, and that link will be there for you as well to join my mailing list. So the second sort of basic must have book that I feel like every writer should have in their library of books is the super, super classic, Strunk and White, The Elements of Style. This is very much a handbook for how to use commas, all of those like grammar type questions that you have. It goes very much into the mechanics of things. This book was vital to me when I was learning to write, not only when I am editing now and I wanna go back. There are so many times that I have gone back to reference that to figure out like, do I need a comma here or not? So like all of those questions about right use of apostrophes, commas, dialogue, tags, all of those like mechanical things. Most people for fiction use the Chicago Manual of Style and this Elements of Style really goes into all the how to's apply it and it gives you lots of just practical examples. It's a very thin little book. It doesn't cost that much. You can get it in your library, but I highly recommend that you buy a physical copy of it for your personal library and dog ear those pages or put a little page flag in those pages that are like the comma rules or apostrophe rules or other grammar type rules that you tend to struggle with so that you can go back and just read and refresh those. They're just, it's just an important one to have. So the elements of style is a must have for all writers. I've got to mention one of my favorite craft writers of all time. I've read most of his books, if not all of them, which is James Scott Bell. He's just amazing. And he has a book on editing that is called Revision and 
hold on, revision and self-editing for publication. This is also a gold mine. It talks about similar types of things that you see in self-editing for fiction writers, but I just love his style of teaching and he gives very practical advice. So this is another really good one. You may not even need to pick up both self-editing for fiction writers and revision and self-editing for publication. You could just pick one or the other that appeals to you if you go and you look at both of them, like in the bookstore or at the library, you might not need both of them because they're very similar kind of books, just with a different style. Um, but I wanted to mention James Scott Bell's version of it because even though self-editing for fiction writers was the first one I picked up years ago when I started writing, I do enjoy James Scott Bell's book and pretty much anything he's written on craft is worth a look. Another one that I own in both PDF form um, when they first put this out on their blog and I also have now a paperback, paperback copy of it is the Emotion Thesaurus, and this is by, I always get their names wrong, this is by Becca Puglisi, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, and Angela Ackerman, and they had a really great website, they probably still have it, and I can't remember what it is now, so if you remember, comment down below and let me know, where they started basically blogging about these sort of things, like different ways to explain or to express anger. And so then they would say the emotion of anger, and they would give you all these examples of how you see anger, because we hear it as writers all the time, show, don't tell. So how do you show anger other than just saying he was angry or he was filled with rage? So now they give you all of these different ways to explain it, not only the way it feels on the inside if you're angry, but also the way it physically manifests, like his cheeks or his, you know, red traveled up his you know, neck or whatever. Um, I wish I had it out, but I know I've already packed this one to give you better examples than what I can just come up with when I'm trying to talk about it. But it's so wonderful because you can basically alphabetically just turn to the emotion that you're trying to portray and it gives you all these examples. And even if you don't pull examples directly from what they say, it gives you so much great like inspiration of how I can explain that. Like fists clenched or, you know, his jaw was tight or or a certain way someone looks or the way it feels inside, like just the different sensations that you would feel when you're having that emotion. And this is one of those that, you know, you don't want to go overboard in your writing where it's like every time a character has an emotion, you have this like very like high, well, we talked about hyperbole in the self-editing video. You don't want it to be melodramatic that every single time they have a, a emotion, it's this crazy thing. But you do want to show emotion on the page instead of just telling us that he was angry. We want to see him being angry. We want to hear it in his voice. We want to see it in the dialogue tags and in the description of how he's doing and what he's how he's acting. And this book is a really great resource for that. And that was their first one, I believe, that came out. And now they've got tons of these sort of the thesauruses. They have ones that are setting based. So um, you know, like if you're des describing certain types of settings, you've got some that are like negative trait thesaurus. So just go check out their entire line of thesaurus or thesauri. I don't know which one it is, um, but they have tons of them now. And I actually would love to pick up all of them, but the only one I think I own is the emotion thesaurus. It's great for editing when you're going through and like you've just told a lot of emotions, like he did this and he was angry. Now you get to, and you're editing, really ramp it up and add that emotion in by showing it even better. So this is just a great resource that I highly recommend. And I, again, love to have it on paper instead of having it on my phone because you can actually like physically turn to the page and see it, but it also works you know they have these in ebook at, um, at least at Kindle I know for sure another book that is really good is by Susan Bell and this is called the artful edit so this book is a little bit different from just the like self-editing for fiction writers because she goes into a lot of examples from other writers who are professional like classic authors so she goes into like interviews and you know um more examples and samples of stuff. And she talks about how, you know, it is more than just the mechanics. When you edit your book, it's more than just the mechanics of getting the typos and, um, you know, the proofreading kind of things of it. Like there is an art to editing your book and to crafting it into a better story. And I just like the approach that she has in this book. So I highly recommend at least picking this one up to read um, just to get the examples and get her point of view on 
the art of editing. It's called The Artful Edit. Another book that I personally love that was recommended to me early on when I first started writing young adult is this book called Second Sight. And it says an editor's talks on writing, revising, and publishing books for ch children and young adult. And this is by Cheryl B. Klein. And I know that it is specifically says it's writing books for children and young adults, but I think that it's a valuable read for people who are writing any kind of book because it's it really gives you like a professional editor's insight and take on how to edit a novel. And she also talks about like she talks about things like really bad first lines, how to polish up that first chapter, how to hook your reader, all of those kinds of things that t sort of take your writing to the next level and give it a second fresh set of eyes. So I just really, really highly recommend this as at least a read through. If you're not gonna pick up the actual copy of it like this, then at least get it in digital format and read through it once or get it from your library. Um, some of these, like I said, I would recommend that you absolutely buy, like The Emotion Thesaurus, um, The Elements of Style. Those are books you should buy and have in your library. Second Sight is something you just at least need to read through even if you don't purchase the book. So see if you can grab it from your library. I just highly recommend it even if you're not writing young adult books. Another book that um, I have to shout out to this other author on craft writing, which is K.M. Wyland. She has changed my writing and taken it to the next level. Her books are brilliant. I highly recommend that you follow her over on Facebook. She's constantly sharing stuff on her blog and through her newsletter. I just cannot tell you enough like how wonderful she is in terms of teaching craft and things like that. So she has several books. She has a book on outlining your novel, a book on structuring your novel, and then she has also a book that I'm recommending to you here called Creating Character Arcs. And when I first read this book, even though it was just a few years ago, it was a little bit over my head because she goes so deep into really marrying character arc with edits and with the plot of your novel. And so often books on character arc are just like, here's your character arc, here's your plot, and they don't have anything to do with each other, even though we as writers know that they're interwoven. You know, you can't have character arc with some, without some kind of plot. Doesn't matter if your book is plot driven or character driven, you need both to have a really great novel. You need that character arc to really work well within your plot. What she does in this book, Creating Character Arcs, is she really goes into how to marry your plot points, like that first act, where should your character be in their mental state by the time you hit that first act and first doorway of no return. And this for me was mind blowing. She goes a lot into the wound your character has and what she calls um, the lie, the lie your character tells themselves. And then she basically tells you how a character works through that lie throughout the novel. And I would love K.M. Wyland, if you ever watch any of my videos, which I'm sure you're not, but if you do, um, I would love to see a book on even more how to carry those character arcs into a long running series like mine, because I'm on book 11 currently of my long running series. So I've been working with the same character for a million words. And so I would love to see like how characters character art continues to grow throughout that, but that's for another video. I just highly recommend that when you start your edits, you understand this part because this is part of what can take your novel to the next level. All right, so those are my top books on editing. I promised you this one would be a little bit shorter. Go grab, I will put all the links for you down below. Um, I'm just giving you the Amazon links because it makes it easier, but I'm sure that if you read on Apple Books or Google Play Books, you can find those books there as well. So feel free to grab them on a vendor of your choice or to head out to your local Barnes and Noble and grab these books um, in person. Also, if you have any recommendations for books that specifically deal with editing that you love, that you use, and you find great references and resources, please go ahead and link those down below so that we can help each other in the community in finding really great books on editing. I hope this has helped, and I will see you guys again on Thursday for part five of this How to Edit Your Novel series, where we are going to talk about how to know when your edits are done, <laughs> because this is another thing that I feel like a lot of us struggle with that we think, 
okay, I'm working on it and you could just work on it forever and you could fiddle with this and you could change this and you could go here. It's like, how do you know when it's good enough to send out, when it's good enough to start querying or when it's good enough to actually publish it? How do you know when to stop fiddling with it? So we're gonna address all your questions about that on Thursday. And then the final video will come on Sunday where we will discuss and I will show you my organization of how I organize my edits, how I do my edits. So that's gonna be another kind of longer but more hands-on sort of behind the scenes view of edits. Be sure to head over to my website at heartbreathings.com slash how to edit your novel and pick up your free 12 page editing guide download over there. And I will see you guys in the next editing video. Talk soon. Bye.